When SARS broke out in Singapore in 2003, healthcare facilities were stretched in tackling it. At the time, only a few specialists had any experience with managing an infectious disease outbreak. Once Singapore was declared SARS-free, Tomasic Life Sciences Laboratory started working to gain a better understanding of the disease. Now they have a diagnostic kit for the virus. Individuals experiencing SARS-like symptoms such as high fever or cough can be screened with this device using a drop of their blood. Results are shown within 5 to 10 minutes. Two lines indicate a positive result. Researchers say that while it is unlikely that SARS will hit Singapore again, understanding how to fight the virus will help prepare them if other infectious diseases emerge in the future. For example, the same technology used to diagnose SARS can be applied if Ebola hits Singapore, even though the two are different viruses. Once we, uh, we uh, get, a, get a virus sample, and we just uh, uh, one week we can get uh, get the gene expressed. And then we'll categorize. Uh, take about a couple of weeks. I would say in two months uh, we should have a diagnostic kit come out. Of course, we have to go through regulatory agency proof for that. But technology was there. It's it's very easy. The laboratory is currently developing a universal vaccine against avian influenza, better known as bird flu. This vaccine will protect against H5N1, a subtype of the virus which can cause human deaths. Currently, antiviral drugs and vaccines are on the market to fight the disease. But researchers say these can't always safeguard against emerging drug-resistant viruses. Here's an example. When a traditional vaccine enters the body, antibodies are produced to fight it and prevent infection. But influenza viruses are always changing and creating new ones. This is called the antigenic drift. With new viruses taking on different shapes, the antibodies cannot recognize them, thereby allowing certain viruses to evade detection. The universal vaccine the laboratory is developing aims to avoid this, as it will provide full protection against all viruses. It's just like a key to a keyhole. The virus changed the keyhole, so the old antibody, the key, cannot open this keyhole anymore. So we have to generate new vaccine to, to inhibit this virus. So in our case, we we'll produce this universal vaccine. So no matter this virus change into what kind of keyhole, you still hold the correct key to open the door. The vaccine is still in its research stage and its efficacy is being tested on animals. Once an industry partner is found, the universal vaccine could be on the market within one to two years. Researchers say it will be cost effective as it eliminates the need to develop new vaccines based on new selected strains. Separately, researchers have developed an oral vaccine to tackle hand, foot and mouth disease. HFMD is present all year round in Singapore with seasonal outbreaks. Kindergartens have had to be temporarily closed once an active HFMD cluster is identified. But if the oral vaccine is successful, researchers say it could reduce such incidents. Taking a cue from the oral vaccine developed for the polio virus, the vaccine against HFMD aims to fight a severe strain called EV71, which can be fatal. If like follow polio vaccine like that, the child will be given to the child, the, child, the virus will actually cause limited uh, replication in the gut or infect the gut, some gut cell, and then the body will mount and respond, an antibody respond, then they will get rid of the virus. So once the mouse respond, the, the protective system in the child have the memory. So the antibody will, will be there, supposed to be for life. So then the next time the child actually exposed to the virus, the antibody is there already to actually to neutralize the virus. The research team is now looking for interested commercial partners before proceeding to clinical trials. To develop such a diagnostic tools and vaccines, special care is taken to ensure that scientists work safely on highly infectious diseases. Laboratories are classified according to how contagious or dangerous samples being dealt with are. The levels of containment range from the lowest at biosafety level 1 to the highest at level 4. This is a biosafety level 3 lab and requires researchers to be fully suited up. There's even a mobile biosafety level 3 lab which can be transported to areas affected by an outbreak of disease. If let's say 
an outbreak occurs in a particular part of the country or in another country where they cannot have facilities for handling those particular pathogens, we could actually move the laboratory to the place where the battle is, so to speak. Then we can handle and dealing with those pathogens and perhaps bring it back to do further research in. So this particular mobile BSL-3 is on wheels, it can go to any part of Singapore, it's small enough that it can actually be airlifted to another country. Training programs are also conducted for researchers across Asia so they can be better equipped to provide effective biocontainment in the event of an outbreak. Since 2002, Tomasic Life Sciences Laboratory has trained over 1,000 medical and research professionals from countries such as Vietnam, Indonesia and Cambodia on biosafety and biorisk management. The Institute says that such knowledge and information sharing is critical when trying to understand and counter the threat of any outbreak of infectious diseases.